Greetings, everyone. I'm just sitting here reflecting on how amazing it is that we just marked the 19th anniversary of 9-11. One of those moments that we'll all remember forever. It's ingrained in us. Our nation had never been invaded before. We were certainly spoiled. We didn't think it could happen to us. We've always been the onlookers during World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. But 19 years ago, everything changed. As Christian writer Philip Yancey wrote, for a time at least, it made us look at our land, our society, and ourselves in a new way. Professional sports canceled all contests, comedies went off the air. We no longer saw ourselves as the lucky few on top of the world but as a people vulnerable to, to hate and terror, that 3,000 people could go to work as part of their daily routine and never come home made us all aware of our very fragile mortality. Remember how during those next few months, the New York Times ran an obituary on every single person who died. Yancey goes on to write, we learned that playing games with kids may be more important than working late for overtime pay. We learned that even in a city known for its crusty cynicism, heroes can emerge. We learned that a, a Jay Leno comedy routine and major league sports, entertaining as they may be, are sometimes obscenely out of place. We learned that love for country and even for strangers can surge up with no warning. We learned that our nation for all of its flaws, has much worth preserving and worth defending. And we learn that at a time of crisis, we turn to our spiritual roots. The president at that time quoted Psalm 23, the bagpipers playing Amazing Grace, the sanitation workers stopping by their makeshift chapel, the Salvation Army chaplains dispensing grace, all the chaplains comforting and grieving the loved ones, Thanks to them, we know where God is when it hurts. Remember that Congress sang God Bless America in Buckingham Palace, the guards played the Star Spangled Banner. There was a sudden surge of unity and togetherness of peoples all over the world. There was a pastor of a church in New York City by the name of Gordon MacDonald, and he wrote in his journal, he wrote this, he wrote, and more than once I asked myself, as everyone asks, is God here? And I decided that he is closer to this place than any other place I've ever visited. The strange irony is that amidst this absolute catastrophe of unspeakable proportions, there is a beauty in the way human beings are acting that defies the imagination. Everyone, underscore everyone, is everyone else's brother or sister. There are no strangers among the thousands at the work site. Everyone talks, everyone cooperates, everyone does the next thing that has to be done. No job is too small, too humble, or on the other hand, too large. Tears ran freely, affection was exchanged openly, exhaustion was defied. We all stopped caring about ourselves. The words, it's not about me, were never more true. No church service, no church sanctuary, no religiously inspired service has spoken so deeply into my soul, says uh, MacDonald, and witness to the presence of God is those hours at the crash site that I spent. In all my years of Christian ministry, I never felt more alive than I felt last night, being on that street, giving cold water to workmen, Praying and weeping with them, listening to their stories was the closest I have ever felt to God. Even though it sounds melodramatic, I kept finding myself saying, this is the place where Jesus most wants to be. Well, 19 years later, we look back, we, we survived 9-11. We came together as a people who looked out for each other. And where do we find ourselves in 2020? a health crisis of pandemic proportions. We no longer see ourselves as the lucky few in the midst of the wealthiest nation on earth, able to avoid plagues like this. No, 
No, plagues spare no one, not the rich or the poor. We now realize how vulnerable we all are and how fragile is our mortality. So today we need to hear the words of that New York City past pastor that we all stopped caring about ourselves. The words, it's not about me, are really needed so essentially in our world today. It's more, it's all about us. So we want to be able to say about how we deal with this crisis, what that New York City pastor said about 9-11. Amidst this absolute catastrophe of unspeakable proportions, there is a beauty in the way human beings are acting that defines the imagination. Everyone, underscore everyone, is everyone else's brother or sister. This is what we need to experience again as we continue now on this challenging fall and winter season. We cannot get lazy about this virus. We must, as the scriptures remind us, stay awake. Dr. Fauci just said that getting back to anything that resembles what normalcy was in life before COVID-19 might not be till the end of 2021. That is certainly discouraging, but we are in this together. Our God is with us, gracing us. I'm presently reading a wonderful book called The Splendid and the Vile about Churchill and the Blitz in London. When the people of London had to live for months keeping their homes dark at night, living underground during the air raids, watching bombs falling on their city, people dying, they rose to the task. So can we. Let us stay vigilant, especially as the children return to school and the cold and flu season comes upon us. God is working all around us, through all of us, especially in all those who take care of us in our healthcare world and those who make sure that we have food and water to nourish us. So as we reflect on 9-11, let us take some of the things that we learned from that and use them as we struggle now and know that we will also survive COVID-19. Have a peaceful week. Let us pray for each other to be safe and healthy.